Okay, very good morning, my dear students. See in the last class. Okay, very good morning, one and all. In the last class, we have started uh, differential phase shift keying technique, and we have discussed uh, the importance of DPSK. Okay, and even uh, we discussed the transmitter section of DPSK technique. So we already discussed that differential phase shift keying. Uh, it follows. It makes use of differential encoder. It makes use of differential encoder. <laughs> differential encoder that will compare the present uh, input with the past differential data. And uh, already we discussed uh, the two main drawbacks of BPSK as. In BPSK already we discussed that it makes use of coherent uh, detection. Because it makes use of coherent detection, it consists of square law device at the front end part. So that's why. Uh, so already we know that the phase shift keying, the binary phase shift keying signal, general form is B of t AC cos omega CT, where B of t is plus or minus one. Once it is squared by the coherent detection detector, because we are using square law device, so this will this will square our data. Once uh, we square it, automatically we'll get the positive. So instead of plus one or minus one, we'll get the result as positive only. And uh, an another thing is in BPSK coherent detection system, we cannot distinguish the polarity of received signal. That is the first drawback. And second drawback is here the design of coherent version is complex. Of BPSK receiver section is complex. And also we have one more drawback of binary phase shift keying. That is uh, other than these two, we have one more uh, drawback. In the case of uh, um, by like binary phase shift keying technique, we'll make use of bipolar signal as input. Bipolar signal as input signal. OK, once we use bipolar input signal, once we make use of bipolar signal as input, it is completely completely unstable ok because the input is uh, bipolar sometimes there is a possibility that it will consume lot of uh, power so that's why bipolar instead of bipolar we are designing a differential phase shift keying where you will have where you will have unipolar as input signal what is the main drawback of uh, bipolar input signal as input if you make use of bipolar input signal as uh, our uh, uh, data so this bipolar uh, uh, signal will uh, using or uh, utilization of this bipolar signal will consume lot of power will consume lot of power to overcome that uh, we are implementing a new technique called as differential psk where we'll once again make use of unipolar energy instead of bipolar energy so here all, already you know that uh, the input is a unipolar energy because already we discussed uh, in dpsk uh, the input signal is compared with the past differential encoded data. So that out, our output is a unipolar energy. So what are the main two drawbacks of BPSK? One is the design of coherent version of BPSK receiver section is complex. And here you will make use of bipolar input signal as input signal as the initial data. OK. So because of that bipolarity, power consumption will be more. And second thing is uh, square uh, because uh, we are using square law device at the front end part of receiver section. Coherent receiver section of BPSK output is always positive, so it cannot detect the polarity. So to overcome this complexity and power polarity problem as well as power consumption problem of coherent version of BPSK, we are implementing non coherent version. See already we discussed this in the last class. The input binary sequence BK is compared with past that is differential encoder data. Past differential encoded data. How can you get the past data? By storing it in the delay element. So this delay element which is used in the feedback section, it will store the past differential encoded output. The differential encoder output is represented by D suffix K. And that is fed back to as as the past element to the 
input of differential encoder system. So that past element is generally the delay element and that is represented by D case B suffix K minus one. Now this input binary sequence and uh, our uh, past differential encoded data both are compared. And already I told you that this differential encoder obeys XNOR operation. It follows XNOR operation. OK, so already we know that uh, uh, once you have XNOR operation, what is the principle of XNOR? If both the inputs are same for same inputs, that is when BK is equal to DK minus one, output is one. What is output DK? OK, uh, when both the inputs are not same or different, that is when BK is not equal to DK minus one. That uh, how many possibilities you will get for different inputs? One is zero, one or one zero. Same input combination, either zero, zero or one, one. So because you have two inputs, four combinations will be there. Out of four combinations, same input data occurs at either zero, zero or one, one. And different input data, like if you take a different input data, so it will be BK and DK minus one. Both are different where you can take a 0 1 or 1 0 as a combination that is applied to the XNOR. So XNOR for same input you will get the output DK as 1 and for different input you will get the output as DK as 0. So now you can say that our DK is the unipolar signal because its output is 1 when both the inputs are same. Output is 0 when both the inputs are different. So that's why DK is a unipolar energy signal. What is DK? Different pass uh, differential encoder output. So what is D suffix K? Differential encoder output. What is DK minus one? Delay element of differential encoded data. Okay, so this is about our uh, transmitter section. Now that the unipolar energy obtained from the differential encoder is applied to the product modulator. So this product modulator multiplies DK with carrier component. Carrier is AC cos omega CT and DK is the unipolar energy obtained from the differential encoder. Both are multiplied to generate DK into AC cos omega CT. So this is the, our general form of DPSK signal. What is the general form of uh, BPSK signal? Binary phase shift keying. B of T into AC cos omega CT, where B of T is a bipolar energy, which is plus or minus one. But our DK is unipolar. It has one when both the inputs are same, zero when both the inputs are different. Both are multiplied to generate DK into AC cos omega CT. That is our DPSK signal. Now this DPSK signal, so please observe the thing. So here if you observe the DPSK transmitter operating principle, already we discussed this in the last class. If there is no transition or when same data, differential encoder output will be one. And differential encoder output is zero when we have different data, when we have different data. When the differential encoder output is one, what will be the phase? Phase is zero radians. When differential encoder output is zero, that is for different data, phase will be pi. Okay, phase will be pi radians. So why we are showing very much interest on phase of uh, DK, where DK is the differential encoded output. Okay, what is the importance of uh, taking the phase variation of DK? Because we are varying the phase of sinusoidal carrier. That's nothing but the PSK operation. So what is PSK? The phase of the sinusoidal carrier is varied in accordance with instantaneous values of message signal that is 0 and 1 by keeping the amplitude and frequency as constant. So here phase is the only parameter uh, which is used to recover our message signal at the receiver section. Okay, so now what is the input binary sequence? It is Double zero one, double zero one, double zero one, and one. What is the transmitter principle? So in DPSK, the transmitter principle is by 
comparing dk minus 1 with bk dk minus 1 with bk if dk minus 1 is compared with bk so you will get the corresponding differential encoded data dk so you can observe the same here so here dk minus 1 initially we don't have uh, for the first uh, element of bk we don't have dk minus 1 we don't have encoder output so no past element so what you can do here here you can compare uh, bk with dk minus 1 by considering arbitrary data by considering arbitrary data that may be either 0 or 1 that may be either 0 or 1 so if 0 is compared with 1 the output will it is of different data so output will be 0 and the corresponding phase is represented in third row second row represents the output of differential encoder third row represents the phase of dk okay so how differential encoder output will be dk how you will get compare dk minus 1 with first element of bk kth element so if you compare 1 and 0 so if 1 and 0 both are different data so our output will be bk will dk will be 0 because it is different data once it is different data 0 dk is 0 our phase is pi radians because different data now next is next 0 is compared with 0 that is dk dk is compared with bk plus 1 dk is compared with bk plus 1 so what happens here 0 0 so if 0 0 same data so our output will be 1 so what happens to our phase so if for same data there is no phase variation so it will be 0 next one is compared with 1 so our output is 1 so uh, the resultant is 0 because same data there is no phase uh, no phase change so that's why phase representation is 0 for same data for the same inputs and for different inputs we will have phase variation as pi okay like that we represent the phase of dk so this is a transmitter principle but what is a receiver principle receiver principle states that uh, you can extract the binary signal by comparing the phase of dk and the phase of dk minus 1 now if you have dk how can you get dk minus 1 you can observe fourth row fourth row represents the shifted sequence shifted differential encoded data that is dk minus 1 dk minus 1 what is dk minus 1 it is delay element okay it is delay element that you should uh, that that particular sequence should start from k is equal to 1 instead of starting at k is equal to 0 for example if the existing uh, sequence is dk how can you get dk minus 1 dk is a sequence that starts for k equals to 0 at one particular instant when k is equal to 1 our dk minus 1 uh, sequence will start so that's why we can say that uh, in order to get the delay element delay sequence please uh, shift the entire sequence by one write one write single uh, write bit sequence is our delay bit so you can obtain the shifted differentially encoded data by shifting the dk towards one bit right that's why what is the lsb bit of uh, dk1 so that one will be removed if you right shift the entire sequence so that's why you will get the first data bit as arbitrary data and second bit is 0 double 1 0 double 1 0 double 1 and the triple 1 you have last bit as for lsb bit dk of dk it is 1 that 1 will be eliminated if you right shift the entire sequence 1 bit right uh, you, sh you should shift now how can you get the phase shifted data phase how can you get for the shifted uh, uh, sequence dk minus 1 so you can get as if the encoded data is 1 then the phase is 0 when you will get 1 for same data you will get 1 
Okay, so our phase difference is zero. Whenever you, if the encoded data is zero, you will get phase as pi radians. Please compare dk with dk minus one. If you compare like that, if you compare like that, uh, what happens to our uh, phase comparison output when one is compared? Please observe uh, three uh, row, third row is compared with fifth row. So pi is compared with zero. So pi is a sequence like a waveform of uh, 180 degrees phase shift and zero is like uh, the corresponding sinusoidal carrier phase. OK, so if both the phase are different opposite to each other, then our magnitude will decrease. If both the phase is, is same, that may be zero or that may be pi. If both the uh, phase of dk and dk minus one is same, then the magnitude will increase. If one is pi and other is zero, the magnitude will reduce. OK, so this reduction or increase in the magnitude is the output of low pass filter. So this is obtained by comparing the phase of dk and dk minus one. So finally you will get a negative, negative, positive like that. So whenever you have different phase, you will get a reduction in the magnitude. Whenever you have same phase, you will get increase in the magnitude. Now finally you get the output of low pass filter with reduced or increased magnitudes. Then that is applied to the decision device. So seventh row represents the output of decision device. Seventh row represents the output of decision device. Output of decision device, which is uh, like uh, you can define it based on comparing the low pass filter output with threshold. Here low pass filter output is nothing but the phase comparison output. OK, that is a reduction in less magnitude or high magnitude. If the magnitude is less compared to threshold. OK, so detected binary signal is the output of decision device. If you have less magnitude, if that is compared with threshold, then output is zero. If low pass filter output is very high, then uh, higher than the threshold, then our data bit is one. So like that you will get uh, the binary sequence as the output. Now actually I have given uh, homework. I told you to complete the entire like. Uh, transmitter as well as receiver principle by considering the arbitrary data zero. Did you complete? So any one of you did you complete? So you can share your screen if you come if any one of the student completed that work. OK, I will check the homework in uh, during the last 10 minutes. So meanwhile, we can complete the se session DPSK section. So already we discussed the principle of DPSK receiver. What is the principle of DPSK receiver? DPSK receiver transmitter consists of differential encoder. OK, and followed by multiplayer. But here in the receiver section, we don't have any uh, like carrier component because already I told you that this is a non coherent version. So once it is the non coherent version, once it is the non coherent version, we don't have any carrier at the receiver section. So DPSK receiver section consists of comparator, low pass filter and decision device. What this comparator here you cannot identify any uh, any sort of like carrier component you cannot use because this is the non coherent version of binary phase shift keying technique. So please observe this comparator. What is the first element a comparator? What this comparator will do? It will compare the DPSK signal phase with DPSK signal phase that is phase of DK. Is compared with phase of DK minus one. Phase of DK is compared with phase of DK minus one. How can you get phase of DK minus one? 
once again by right shifting the data actually in the last slide we we have gone through uh, the phase of dk minus 1 first how can you get the dk minus 1 sequence by right shifting the entire sequence of dk you can get dk minus 1 by right shifting uh, the entire sequence by one bit you will get dk minus 1 the phase of dk is compared with phase of dk minus 1 then uh, we after uh, arriving arrival of dk first what you should do you should compare the phase of dk with the generated dk minus 1 you can obtain dk minus 1 by uh, one bit right shift okay you can get dk minus 1 then evaluate the phase for both dk and dk minus 1 how can you evaluate the phase when the data is 1 when the corresponding data bit is 1 our phase is 0 when data bit is 0 our phase is 5 so like that phase will be generated phase for dk as well as phase for dk minus 1 will be generated as what we have seen in the earlier slide that is the principle of dpsk now the phase of dk and phase of dk minus 1 both are compared okay and after comparison that is applied to the low pass filter after comparison it is applied to the low pass filter so what this low pass filter do will do it will it will take the uh, compar comparator output okay it will take the comparator output and what it will do it will smoothen the magnitudes it will smoothen the magnitude and generate the corresponding magnitude of comparator output Okay, by eliminating the higher frequency components, it will generate the magnitude of the comparator output. Okay, now uh, what is the principle of low pass filter here? If there exists any phase difference between the magnitude of low pass filter output will decrease. What here will do? For example, if, uh, if both the phase of DK and phase of DK minus one, if both are having same phase, low pass filter output will increase okay so if phase of uh, dk and phase of uh, dk minus 1 are different that is one is 0 and other is pi or dk is pi and dk minus 1 is 0 then our comparator output will reduce so low pass filter will output will also reduce okay so phase of dk and phase of dk minus 1 both are compared so that you will get low pass filter output that low pass filter output is applied to the decision device. When you will get less uh, output from the low pass filter, if you have less output from the comparator. Okay, so whenever the output from the low pass filter is less than or equal to threshold, if the low pass filter output is less than or equal to threshold, you can get the decision device output as zero. You can get the decision device output as zero. If the low pass filter output is greater than threshold, the decision device output is one okay so almost all uh, the working principle from low pass filter decision device so these are the common blocks for any kind of receiver section but uh, the only the front end section will differ in the case of differential psk receiver we will have comparator which compares the phase of uh, incoming sequence with the shifted uh, sequence okay the phase will be way compared but in the case of uh, like uh, binary phase shift uh, receiver section will have three sections for generation of coherent carrier namely square law device followed by bandpass filter and then followed by the frequency divider and both are applied to the multiplayer the coherent carrier and the received signal are applied to the carrier like multiplayer and the multiplayer output is once again applied to the low pass filter in decision device so common point here is that here the common terms like low pass filter and decision device these are the common blocks or elements used for the reconstruction of digital signal from the original format only the front end section for, uh, for any kind of receiver section will differ other than the the dead end points you will have low you should make use of low pass filter and decision device these two elements are common for every uh, receiver section next next sir, let us go through the bandwidth of dpsk signal see already we discussed the bandwidth of uh, bpsk so can any one of you tell me what is the bandwidth of binary phase shift keying technique 
we already we calculated the bandwidth of binary phase shift keying and binary amplitude shift keying techniques. Can any one of you state what is the um, like uh, bandwidth of BPSK or BASK? Any one of you kindly respond. What is the bandwidth of binary phase shift keying? Yes, very good. It is two. Uh, yes, very good. It is two FP. And in the case of binary ASK also, we calculated it as two FP only because we have multiplier at the receiver section that will multiply the carrier with the received signal. So at the transmitter also we will make use of multiplier. So upon multiplication, uh, the our carrier component will be shifted by plus or minus FP. So upper cutoff will be FC plus FB and lower will be FC minus FB. Okay. Now please always uh, remember the general bandwidth expression for any kind of PSK sig signal. So general bandwidth expression for any kind of PSK signal is 2 FB by N. Please remember that the general expression for any PSK signal, the general expression for any PSK signal is equals to 2 FB by N, not DPSK signal. General expression for any PSK signal, if you take, it is 2 FB by N. Now let us uh, uh, like please compare it with BPSK. Now, what is the value of N in binary PSK signal? What is the value of N? What is N actually? Number of bits transmitted per symbol. Number of bits transmitted per symbol. Please tell me how many number of bits are transmitted per symbol in the case of binary phase shift keying. Please substitute the value of N in this equation and see whether you got it as 2FB or not. What is the value of n in the case of uh, binary phase shift keying? Any student please respond. What is the value of n? How many number of bits are transmitted per symbol in binary transmission techniques? Please respond. How many number of bits are transmitted per symbol in binary trans binary phase shift keying? Please respond. One bit. Uh, yes, it is equals to one bit. So if please replace N as one bit. 2FB by one. Two FB. one it will be 2FB. So for the case of binary phase shift keying technique, you can uh, say that our bandwidth, our bandwidth is equals to 2FB by 1. So it is equals to 2FB. Now uh, let us go through QPSK. Actually, we did not discuss that uh, topic, but whenever QPSK is for quadrature phase shift keying, what will be the value of N? It is 4 array. So that's why N will be 2. So that's why in quadrature phase shift keying, our bandwidth is FB. Please let us go through DPSK. In DPSK, uh, if you observe the transmitter section, if you observe the transmitter section, it consists of differential encoder. It consists of differential encoder. If you observe carefully, you are simultaneously transmitting two bits because you are comparing two bits simultaneously 
and transmitting them via the differential encoder. It means that in the case of DPSK transmitter section, we are transmitting simultaneously transmitting two bits. Therefore, n is equal to two bits per symbol. Therefore, n is equal to two bits per symbol. Therefore, bandwidth of DPSK signal is equal to 2FB by 2. So that's why it is equals to FP. See, even the bandwidth of quadrature phase shift keying, it is, it is 4 array PSK. Okay, 4 array. So that means n is equal to 2. In quadrature phase shift keying also, the bandwidth is FB. So that's why bandwidth requirement is reduced to FB. But in the case of BPSK, the bandwidth is 2FB by N. So what is the general expression for bandwidth of uh, like general expression for any PSK signal? It is 2FB by N, 2FB by N. So or else you can write it as uh, general expression for any MRA PSK signal, MRA PSK signal as you can write it as M array. PSK. So for any MRA PSK, it is how much? 2FB by N. Okay, what is the general expression for any MRA PSK signal? It is 2FB by N. So bandwidth expression for any MRA PSK signal is 2FB by N, where M is equal to 2 power N, where M represents the number of phase changes. For example, if it is binary, it will have two phase changes that will be 0 and pi. Okay, so we cannot say this DPSK as completely binary and completely quadrature. But here, because you are using differential encoder, two bits are simultaneously transmitted. Okay. But other than that, a working principle is same as that of binary PSK because you will make use of multiplier and that multiplier will uh, take the product of B of K, BK. That is the differential encoder output with the oscillator. Where oscillator generates the carrier. So finally, what is the bandwidth of DPSK? It is 2FB by 2, so it will be FB. So bandwidth requirement is reduced over B BPSK. That is the advantage of differential phase shift keying over BPSK. Next, let us go through the advantages of differential phase shift keying. So here, if you observe the advantages, here the design of DPSK transmitter and receiver sections is simple and it is inexpensive. Can you say why it is simple? Because in transmitter, it, op it, uh, like it works under XNOR operation. Just we it will compare the uh, present uh, upcoming input with the past stored differential encoder output. It follows XNOR operation and you will get some output. That output is a unipolar energy. So if, if you have same inputs, you will get the output as 1. If you have different input, the output will be less. And if the output is 1, the phase difference is 0. And if the output is zero, the phase difference is pi. Just it depends on only one particular principle. Principle of differential encoding and principle of phase generation. That's all. So say, and the receiver, at the receiver, you will compare the phase of uh, DK with phase of shifted DK. Right shifted DK. That is DK minus one. So the design is almost all simple and inexpensive. But in the case of uh, coherent detection, I think you can use very familiar because the uh, first you need to square the bandpass filter and then once again you need to divide. Okay, the working principle of as well as the implementation of binary phase shift keying is complex because there we will use coherent detection because you need to uh, synchronize. Uh, it's very di like difficult uh, task to generate the synchronous carrier at the receiver section. But here there is no need of synchronization. Once there is no need of synchronization, obviously the probability of error is more. That is secondary issue. But for simplicity, like for few applications, uh, you need to take uh, PPA, like phase shift keying uh, result. But uh, for certain applications, you need to simplify the circuit. At that instance, you can make use of 
differential phase shift keying transmitter and receiver sections which is very simple and inexpensive and also here already we discussed uh, uh, our bpsk has complexity problem due to coherent detection and polarity problem why polarity problem because here we'll make use of bipolar signal once you makes use of bipolar signal why bipolar its magnitude is plus or minus 1 uh, when the data bit is 1 and when data bit is 0 respectively so that's why our by input signal is a bipolar so once it is bipolar obviously it has like a high power consumption and also once it is bipolar our square law detector cannot be able to detect our uh, polarity detect the polarity at the receiver section so this complexity and polarity problem of coherent version you can eliminate by using differential phase shift keying the next advantage is it offers less bandwidth just now we discussed it offers less bandwidth that is fb over binary phase shift keying having a bandwidth of 2 fb so the dpsk is bandwidth efficient system compared to our binary phase shift keying and uh, last advantage already we discussed the same so many times in dpsk unipolar energy is used in dpsk unipolar energy is used because uh, this differential encoder generates a unipolar energy format this unipolar energy leads to like resumes the uh, it reduces the power consumption reduces the power consumption so that's why uh, but in the case of bipolar energy Uh, then that is in the case of binary psk we will make use of bipolar energy so it increases the power consumption okay these are the advantages of differential phase shift keying technique next let us move to the next slide so that you can see the disadvantages of differential phase shift keying so let us move to the first drawback dpsk system do not use coherent carrier do not use coherent carrier already we told that this is a non coherent version of bpsk so you don't make use of carrier just it will make use of comparator and it will compare the phase of uh, upcoming with right shifted data okay upcoming signal with its corresponding right shifted data so because you are comparing like that uh, and the, as you are not using synchronous carrier this leads to increase in the probability of error compared to bpsk so noise interference is more than binary phase shift keying okay uh, what is the drawback same drawbacks for non coherent version so already you know that non coherent version will uh, increase the probability of error okay that is the first common drawback for any kind of non coherent detection and second drawback is see in dpsk what you are doing actually you are like uh, comparing the present data with the past data at the trace transmitter section and the phase of present data with uh, the shifted data at the receiver section okay like that anyhow you are comparing comparing the uh, inputs during comparison for example if there is any single bit error instead of one if uh, the system represents it as zero okay this is a rare phenomenon but for example instead of representing one as zero or zero as one what will happen the entire data sequence gets disturbed because you are doing xor operation so our complete data may gets disturbed so uh, any single bit error any single bit error in the received sequence especially at the receiver you will receive some data for example due to channel uh, due to noise present in the channel if zero is represented zero in unexpectedly if it is uh, if we receive it as one what will happen during comparison uh, the you the errors gets propagated the bit errors gets propagated throughout the entire sequence so what is the main drawback of dpsk in dpsk uh, the bit error gets propagated propagated to the entire sequence so any single bit error any single bit error in the received signal will dis of the entire sequence so bit error propagation will occur bit error propagation will occur okay so last uh, so final drawback is that and here the, already i told you that see already i told you that 
this uses unipolar so power consumption is less so what are the two main drawbacks here first drawback is same for any non coherent version that is increase in the probability of error due to non coherent version okay because you are using not using the coherent carrier that's the first issue and second one is bit error propagation this you should minimize actually this you should minimize bit error propagation will occur uh, so because if there is any singit bit error in the received sequence that will disturb the entire data that will gets propagated towards the entire sequence that's why the problem is called as bit error propagation bit error propagation any single bit error causes the error propagate toward towards the entire sequence because you are using uh, the comparator and phase uh, and xnor using xnor operation okay next to overcome the drawbacks of differential phase shift keying and binary phase shift keying we are using differential encoded psk so what is differential encoded psk this differential encoded psk it is a combination of differential phase shift keying and binary phase shift keying so before going to discuss about uh, differential encoded psk let us see the applications of dpsk so please remember that the applications of differential phase shift keying and uh, binary phase shift keying remains almost all same but wherever you want like simplicity for the circuit and power consumption you can opt differential phase shift keying but error is somewhat high compared to binary phase shift keying so here uh, here you can use almost all similar applications to that of binary phase shift keying and here the bandwidth is also less power consumption is less okay so like so many advantages but uh, the main drawback is uh, be, like probability of error is more chances of error getting error is more so it's used in commercial co division multiplexing similarly local area networks while, uh, like wireless communications rf id tags also will use radio frequency identification similarly bluetooth communications you can prefer but under the constraints that a power consumption low power consumption if you need or low bandwidth you can make use of differential phase shift keying but the probability of error is more because of its non coherent version but uh, you should be able to eliminate the second drawback of dpsk that is bit error propagation that you can eliminate by using differentially encoded psk so differentially encoded psk system okay so next one is differentially encoded psk system is implemented to overcome few drawbacks of dpsk and bpsk what is the main drawback of dpsk it uses non coherent version so its probability of error is more but regarding its transmitter section it's very good so because in the transmitter section you are generate you are using differential encoder to generate unipolar energy you are using differential encoder at the dpsk transmitter section it it eliminates the problem of bipo using bipolar energy and it transmits simultaneously two data bits by comparing okay so you can reduce its bandwidth and second one is you can make use of unipolar energy to reduce the power consumption okay so that's why dpsk transmitter section has a lot of advantages and similarly bpsk receiver so even because of its complexity so even though vpsk receiver is complex coherent receiver is complex but what are the advantages of uh, coherent detection you can reduce its probability of error so that's why uh, our differentially encoded psk uses dpsk transmitter section and vpsk receiver okay so this we can discuss in the last next class okay dpsk dpsk this comes under the next module we can discuss it uh, in the next section in the module 5 now please uh, uh, you should remember one thing that differentially encoded psk that is dpsk is a combination of dpsk transmitter and vpsk receiver i think all of you are familiar with the dpsk transmitter section like differential encoder followed by multiplier bpsk receiver the square law device and the bandpass filter and then followed by frequency divided by 2 to generate the coherent carrier okay 
So like that we have so many advantages for BPSK receiver. That's why this differentially encoded PSK uses DPSK transmitter section and BPSK receiver. Now we have 10 minutes time. So meanwhile, actually I, I have given one homework to all of you. So now please one of you respond and share your screen so that I will be able to see your uh, uh, homework. Any one of the student, I don't uh, uh, compel any one of you to show the result. OK, so any one of the student, please share your screen. How many of you completed? Please raise your hand. OK, very good. Uh, I request uh, M not to kindly share your screen. Can you share? Do you have any cap like uh, flexibility to share your screen? So out of the students completed, please I request you to share your screen. J4, M not, N4. OK, thank you very much for completing the homework. OK, please one of you share. Uh, I request J4 to share your screen. Did you receive the uh, same output? Did you receive this uh, receive the same signal what you have transmitted at the input section? Yes, ma'am. OK, very good. Uh, can you please kindly share your screen? Do you have flexibility J4? Mom, you have flexibility? Uh, share uh, uh, or else uh, I'm not anyone. No problem. Problem? Huh? No, ma'am, but uh, I'm not getting the option, ma'am. Oh, okay, ma'am, okay. M not. Can you share your screen? Or else you post no, in the I chat box. The option, ma'am, to share. Uh, okay, okay ma'am, okay. Uh, can you please post it in the chat box so that I will share your uh, uh, like. Ma'am, chat box is not accessible. Is not accessible to you? No, ma'am. So many problems. Then uh, what is the possibility? How can we see your output? Make some random machine. Through WhatsApp. Okay, Ma, thank you. Uh, chat box could have flexibility leather. No, ma'am. 